welcome back to another crochet tutorial with Cozy Rosie UK and today I am sharing with you Gary the Gingerbread. This little gentleman is super cute and he has worked pretty much in one piece. It's just the arms that need to be secured. Now before we get started, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and of course the notification bell so you never miss out on another one of my crochet patterns or tutorials again. Let's run through the materials we're going to need to complete Gary himself. Now I'm using a slightly different shade because this is the one I have on hand. This is Stylecraft Special Aran in shade Mocha. So it's an ever so slightly more burnished brown. A good alternative would be any size four acrylic yarn. Uh, previously I've made Gary using um, paint, paint box yarns, simply Aran in shade Soft Fudge. That's a bit more of a warmer brown than this one, but either shade and either yarn works up really well. You're probably only going to need about 40 meters to complete them. I have a whole ball there, so I should be able to make a few. You're going to need a scrap of red, probably about that much of red for his smile. I've also got these three millimeter pre-made pom-poms. These are from Hobbycraft that I did purchase using my staff discount. And these will be making his sweets. Um, we've got some nine millimeter safety eyes along with their little backs here. And then I'm going to be adding on some little ribbon to create a bow around his neck. I probably won't tie it around his neck, I'll just make a bow and glue that on. I am going to be using a glue gun to secure his pom-poms. You can use whatever glue you have to hand. And then hook-wise, we're going to need a 5mm hook. If you find that your stitches are a little bit looser than the average person, then you can go down a hook size. So if you've got loose stitches, use a 4mm hook with your Aran and that will just help prevent some of the toy stuffing showing through. So you are going to need probably a little bit more than this, but you're going to need a little bit of toy stuffing as well. You're going to need your stitch marker after round one. So for now, all we're going to need is our yarn, our hook and our stitch marker. So we're going to start out by making Gary's head and body all in one piece. We're going to stuff that and then we're going to work the legs onto the bottom of his body and we are going to be working in continuous rounds we're not joining so we are going to so i am going to recommend you use a stitch marker to mark your first stitch of every round now i'm going to make a magic circle to start my project um, if you don't want to do that you can simply do a chain of four and slip stitch to that first chain to create a ring so the way that i do a magic circle i just secure the tail in my palm wrap the yarn around my first two fingers to secure and I bring the working yarn the ball that's the yarn that's attached to the ball to the back so I create a cross near my palm and parallel lines at the front with my hook I come under the front loop grab the back loop bring it up and I create a twist I then pick up the loop at the back bring it through and I'm ready to remove my fingers and I can then tidy up this because we've got our working yarn and we want our tail out of the way as well. I'll do that for again. I'll do that for you again. So I take the yarn in the palm of my hand. I wrap it around my four fingers, bringing the yarn to the back. I twist it over to create parallel lines on the top of my hand. I come under the front loop pick up the back. When I bring it through, I create a twist. I pick up that back loop and I drop it. <laughs> then I come under the front loop, pick up the back loop and twist. I then yarn over with the working yarn and bring that through the loop on my hook. And then I am safe to remove my fingers Put my working yarn to the side and I want to bring my tail to that side as well. There we go. So they're all together. There's my tail. From here we are ready to start working. You should be able to adjust the size of your loop either by pulling on the loop itself and that will bring more yarn through or you can pull on the tail to make the loop smaller. It's one of the reasons why it's so magic. So continuing on with round one we are going to start by working six single crochets into the center of our magic circle or into the middle of our ring if you've made a chain four. 
So for that, we simply insert the hook. You'll notice that I just secure everything with my hand because it just makes life a little bit easier. And if I find that my loop is getting too big, just pull it tighter. If not, you can just hold the tail against the side. So we're inserting into the middle of that ring. We yarn over, bring our loop back up. So we have our two loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through two. We're going to do that for a total of six times. So that's one US single crochet, one UK double crochet. So we insert, bring our loop up, oops, yarn over and pull through two. Insert, bring our loop up and pull through two. That's three. My hands are a bit sore. I've been crocheting like mad this weekend. One, two, three. And again for number four. Five and six. I have to bear with me, this is a new to me hook. It was gifted to me by um, Fran, who makes, makes wonderful holographic hooks, CC by Fran. And this one is incredibly glittery. It might be a colour changing one, but we'll find out as I carry on. Apologies if you also hear some knocking in the background. My neighbour is replastering a wall. So this is all fun today. I'm just going to make sure that my tail is untwisted. And now that I have my six stitches, so we have one, two, three, four, five and six. We can pull our magic circle and the circle closes. We want to pull it tight enough that it's completely closed, but not tight enough to snap that yarn. So normally we would slip stitch to that first stitch, but because we're going to be working in continuous rounds, we are not joining. We're not joining. Instead, we're going to insert our hook into that first stitch, which I always find a challenge, as you can see. There we are. Making sure that we've got both loops on our hook. I'm hoping you can't hear too much knocking. I'm having to wait in between the knocks. So once we've inserted our hook into that first stitch, we are ready to go straight into round two. Now, one of the things I'm going to have ready is, of course, my stitch marker, because I'm going to be placing a stitch marker in the first stitch of each round to help me keep track of where I am in the round at any time. So instead of joining, we are just going to insert our hook into that first stitch that we made. And we're going to yarn over and bring our loop up ready to work our first single crochet of round two. So instead of slip stitching, we're going to yarn over and pull through both loops on our hook to create the first single crochet of round two. Now we're going to be working two single crochets into each stitch around for this round. So that was our first one. So we're going to reinsert into that same stitch to work a second single crochet into that same stitch. I'm then going to grab my stitch marker. So there's number two, and we're going to insert the stitch marker into stitch number one. And that just means we don't have to count quite as much. I'll probably say that a lot, but I always like to use a stitch marker because I can't count all the way around. So we've worked two single crochets into that first stitch. We're going to work a further two single crochets into each stitch around back to our marker. So that's one, reinsert for number two. We go on to the next stitch where we do the same again. So we work one and two. We're going to continue to repeat this all the way around, working those two single crochets into each stitch. And at the end of round two, we will have a total stitch count of 12. That's one and two. There's only one more to go. And I can tell because I'm nearly back to my marker. So that's one and two. It's always a good idea just to double check you've got the right stitch count after each round because it really can throw out the look of your finished project if they're not correct. So that's two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven, and twelve. So at the end of round two, you should have a total stitch count of twelve single crochets. I'm going to remove my stitch marker, ready to start round three. And in round three, we go straight into that next stitch, ready to work one single crochet into that first stitch. Into the next stitch, we're going to work two single crochets. So we're increasing. So that's number one. 
and we reinsert for number two. Need to pop my stitch marker back into that first stitch. So we worked one, two, and then we worked our first stitch just before that increase. So we're just going to pop that stitch marker back into place. We're going to repeat this pattern of working one single crochet into the next, followed by two single crochets into the next stitch all the way around. We're going to increase our stitch count from 12 to 18. So we're going to insert and work one single crochet into that next stitch and two single crochets into the next. That's one and two. We're going to work one single crochet into the next before working two single crochets into the next and increasing. Just going to continue to repeat that all the way around. And we're going to have a stitch count of 18 at the end of round three. Just working my final increase into that last stitch. So we should always be finishing working an increase at the end of this round. And at the end of round three, you will have a stitch count of 18 single crochets. Going into round four, I'm just going to remove my stitch marker ready to work one single crochet into the next stitch. I'm going to work a single crochet, just one single crochet into the next. And then I'm going to mark my first stitch that I worked of the round. So that we are that one and that's our first one. Once we've worked two single crochets, we're then going to work an increase into the next, working two single crochets into the same stitch. So we've done one, two, and then increased. So we're going to repeat this all the way around, working one single crochet into each of the next two stitches before working two single crochets into the next. One single crochet into each of the next two stitches before working two single crochets into the next. Going to continue to repeat this all the way around and at the end of round four you're going to have a stitch count of 24 single crochets. I'm just working my final increase into that stitch before the beginning of the round and then at the end of round four you should have 24 single crochets. So for rounds five, six and seven we are simply going to work one single crochet into each stitch around so there's no more increasing. So I've worked my first two I'm just going to place my stitch marker back into that first stitch that we made and we're just working one single crochet into each stitch around for a total of three rounds five, six and seven and then I'm going to meet you back Remember, we're not joining, we're just carrying on into the next round and we should maintain our stitch count of 24. So I'll see you at the end of round seven and you'll have a little bit more of a head shape. And we're going to be placing our safety eyes once we've completed these three rounds. I've just finished uh, my three repeats all the way up to round seven. And in case you ever wondered how to count when you're working in a continuous spiral, I always start at the crown or the beginning of the head. So this first circle is round one and then I count the ridges. So one, two, three. Oh, it helps with don't move my thing. One, two, three, four, five, six. And my current row is round seven. I always count behind my hook. If I've started working on my round, it will appear that I've got an eighth round, but obviously I haven't. So I am just always make sure I just count behind my hook and that gives me the right round and usually the round that I'm working. So I've just worked round seven, so I have seven rounds behind my hook. So I'm just going to bring my loop up and I'm going to grab my safety eyes because this is a great point to put those in because there's not, there's no stuffing in the way and there's just, it just makes it a little bit easier before we start closing in his head. So the recommendation is that you place your safety eye between rounds five and six and with three stitches in between. So one, two, three, four, five and six of those two rounds there. Just going to pick that stitch right there. Oh, I lose my eye. Where was it? Let me just pop that one in and I'll find that one I just dropped. Okay, I found it. So once you've got your first eye placed, I always kind of go opposite where my stitch marker is. It doesn't really matter if you do it right here or there. 
but I just tend to do it opposite my stitch marker because in theory that's the front. So we're counting three rows across and then placing our next safety eye. Before ever fixing your backs on, make sure you are happy with the placement of your eyes. You can move them closer together if you want to. Do that on this one. Oops. No, it's, it's, this head is bigger than you think, actually. I would stick with them three stitches apart. I mean, you can move them one closer and have a look. It just looks a little bit too alien to me. So I'm going to stick with having them three stitches apart. And then we get the joyous job of putting the backs on. Apparently there are tools that can help us do this. I flip mine inside out, put it into position. So you should always have the smaller cup towards you and away from the bottom of the eye. And then I kind of push it on the first bit and then use my thumbs either side with my fingers on the eye. And then I push it in as far as it will go. That was one. Oof. And once it's in place, make sure there's no yarn in the way. Oh God, it hurts. There we go. And then we can turn his head the right way out and his eyes are in position. It just looks like nothing right now, but it's going to be fine. I'm going to just tuck that tail in the middle and out of the way. Because it was a magic circle, it is secure. That's not coming undone, even when it's stuffed. It should be absolutely fine. If you have used a chain four and a slip stitch, you might want to weave that end in now to make sure you've got the tightest clothes you can get. Once we've got our safety eyes in place, we are ready to move on to round eight. And we're now gonna start decreasing to bring his head back in. So we're gonna start round eight, working one single crochet into each of the next two stitches. So that's one, and two. Then going to place my stitch marker back into that first stitch. This helps us with our counting. And then we're going to work a single crochet two together across the next two rows. I don't use a single crochet two together. I use the invisible decrease. So I'll show you the single crochet two together, which is where you insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over and bring a loop up. Then you insert your hook into the next stitch along to be decreased, yarn over, bring your third loop up, and then yarn over and pull through all three loops. And you see that space there? This is why I don't do that stitch. I find that becomes really visible when you have stuffed your project. So instead, I use the invisible decrease. It's a lot neater and it doesn't create any lumps and it prevents that hole from showing. We're still gonna decrease across the next two stitches, but instead we're going to insert our hook kind of under the stitch to pick up the front loop only. So you've got your front loop and your back loop and we're just going to pick up the front loop and then we pick up the front loop of our next stitch. It's a little bit fiddly but once you've got those two loops with both once you've got those two front loops on your hook we yarn over bring our hook back through yarn over and pull through two. And it just gives you a much more neat finish on your decreases. We're then going to work into our next stitch. So it's important that you find that next stitch and don't work into the base of the stitch you've just decreased into. And we're working one single crochet into each of the next two. And then we're going to decrease once again across the next two stitches. So I'm just picking up that front loop and that next front loop, yarn over, bring my hook through, yarn over and pull through the loops. We're going to repeat this the whole way around, working one single crochet into each of the next two stitches before decreasing across the next two stitches. So front loop, front loop, oops, and decrease. So continue to repeat that all the way around and at the end of round eight we will have a stitch count of just 18 having reduced six times or decreased six times should I say. Just working my final decrease or invisible decrease she says it's quite hard to do this on camera you can turn your hook and just pick up the front loop 
with your hook as well if that's easier for you. You can see that that has brought the head back in a little bit and at the end of round eight we should have just 18 stitches remaining and you should have finished with a decrease. Going into round nine we are going to work one single crochet into the next stitch before working a decrease across the next two stitches. So again I'm just picking up those front loops Making sure I've got all of it because I didn't know. Okay. I'm working my invisible decrease across those two there. And then I'm just going to place my stitch marker back into that first stitch of the round. We're going to repeat this all the way around. Make sure that you're working into the next stitch, not where you've already worked. So we're working one single crochet into the next before decreasing. One single crochet into the next. And then we're decreasing again, just picking up, I'm just picking up those front loops. Thanks, Emily. And we're just going to repeat that the whole way around back to our marker. So one single crochet followed by a decrease. That's my final decrease on this round. At the end of round nine, we should have just 12 stitches remaining. For round 10, we are simply going to repeat round nine once again. So we are working one single crochet into the next, followed by decreasing across those next two stitches. Oh dear, sorry, I just caught there, there we go. I'm just gonna pop my stitch marker back into my first stitch that we made. And then we're just gonna to continue to repeat that the whole way around. It's going to get a little bit fiddly because our opening is getting a much smaller. So one single crochet into the next and then we decrease and across the next two stitches. So that's one front loop, two front loops, yarn over, pull through and decrease. You can see that I'm squishing mine up where I'm working and moving the things out of the way to make my life a bit easier. So we work one single crochet Rotating it a bit more so I can see my two stitches that I'm decreasing across. So that's one, two, and decrease. Reposition. I've still got three stitches remaining, just working a single crochet and then decrease across the last two. Just look at all that I did. So it is quite a small hole here, but it's a good idea for us to stuff our head at this point. That way we can make sure that the eyes, that way we can make sure we get the eyes in the position that we're happy with. So I'm just gonna grab some of my toy stuffing. Ah, didn't want my bum bombs. And we're just going to take the time to insert this stuffing through this hole. And I'm purposefully pushing up against my eyes to make sure that I fill the space behind them, first and foremost, and without kind of squishing them in the wrong direction. You will see what I mean if you do it wrong. But I'm making sure that they're stuffed into position first before stuffing the remainder of the head. And you'll be surprised how much stuffing can go into this. Don't be shy with it. You want it to be firmly stuffed. how squishy that is for me that's too squishy I need more so again I'm just pushing up against the eyes making sure there's some stuffing in between them and then you can see that I've created quite a big hole and you can't see but there's a big hole at the back here that I need to fill as well don't have to fill it completely I don't want any stuffing near these stitches because we've still got to work into them because we're carrying on to work the last round of our head before carrying on to the next part of the pattern. So if I give that a squish now, you can see how much firmer that is. And I haven't stuffed his neck yet, but I will come back to that later. So still a lot of space around for me to work these stitches without any stuffing getting in the way. So once you've stuffed his head, making sure that you're still happy with the eye position. I'm gonna place my loop back on, oh no I'm not, I just undid that first stitch. That's definitely not a do as I do thing there. Right, now we can go into round 11 
and we're actually going to be increasing into each stitch around. So we're going to start into this first one and we are working two single crochets into that first stitch. So that's one and then reinsert for number two. And we're going to repeat this all the way around. I am going to place my stitch marker back into that first one because I do not want to lose my third place. And we are working two single crochets into each. So at the end of this round, we're going to be back up to a stitch count of 15. So that's one and two into the same. Repeat that again. One and two. So to get to our stitch count of 15, we're going to be working two single crochets into each stitch all the way around to that final stitch. In our final stitch, we are simply going to work one single crochet and that will give us our stitch count of 15. So it should look like it's nice and flared out. So that is his neck and round 11 there is the first round of the body. Round 12, we are going to work one single crochet into each of the next two stitches. So that's one and two. Let's check, I feel like I just did an increase there. Yes, I did. One and two. So one in each of the next two. I place my stitch marker back in and then we're going to increase into the next. So that's one and two into the same. So all the way around to our last stitch, we're going to be working one single crochet into each of the next two stitches before working two single crochets into the next. So continue to repeat that around. So one single crochet into each of the next two before working two single crochets into the next. And I'm going to meet you back when you have one stitch remaining because there will be an odd one left over this time. So when you've worked your last repeat, there should be one stitch remaining and we're just going to work one additional single crochet into that last stitch. So at the end of round 12, you should now have 20 single crochets in the round. Now rounds 13 all the way up to 22, we are simply working one single crochet into each stitch around and we are maintaining our stitch count of 20. So we're simply going to work one single crochet into each stitch around, making sure our stitch count remains at 20 for a total of 10 rounds. So that's going to be rounds 13 and all the way up to round 22. We're just working one single crochet into each. As you approach that last round of round 22, you can, of course, continue to stuff the remainder of the body and make sure that his neck is firmly stuffed as well. And then I'm going to meet you back because we're going to continue on and then we're going to add the legs to the base of his body. So once you have worked your 10 rounds, giving you a total row, giving you a total round count of 22, we can stuff the rest of Gary's body and neck. So I'm just going to take a little bit in just to get right up into his neck there. Perfect. And then we can just stuff the rest of his body. I don't want to, again, I don't want to come too close to these stitches because we are going to have to work into them. So once we are at this point, his head is stuffed, his body is stuffed. We're making sure we've got some space to work into these stitches. Now we need to fasten off because we're going to rejoin to start the legs. So I'm not going to make a chain one. I'm just going to snip the yarn and bring that end through so it doesn't get in the way of our stitches. And I'm actually just going to tuck that in with the stuffing. So once we've fastened off and tucked that end in, we are going to find the center point either by going down from the middle of Terry's eyes or guesstimating it roughly here. I'm just going to put my hook through what looks like the middle stitch. And I'm from here, I'm going to count around nine stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine is where I've marked off. So I'm going to insert my hook into that ninth stitch. So we should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nope, we want nine either side. So let's try the next one. 
one where I fastened off, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then we should have nine on the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So what we're going to do is once we have those middle stitches both onto our hook, we're not going to work into them anymore. We're going to find the end of our yarn and just place that over our hook and bring it through both stitches without dropping it. And place that over and bring that through. That's why we don't want our stuffing in the way. And I'm just gonna make a little chain one to secure. Sorry, my thumb is starting to hurt. Sorry about that. And then I'm gonna rotate so I have the other side facing me. We're gonna leave this tail here. We're not going to work over it because it does create a bit of a tightness on our project. So I'm gonna insert into where that last stitch or that first stitch is worked here. So that's where I fastened off. So that's one. And then we work into the next stitch, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and number nine. We're not going to work into where we've joined. We're just going to leave that there. And that first stitch that we made, not where we joined, but that first stitch becomes the first stitch of the round. So for rounds two, all the way up to round six, so two, three, four, five, six. So for five more rounds, we are simply going to work into that first stitch that we made of the round, not where we joined. We're going to work one single crochet into each stitch around. So I'm gonna place my marker back into that first stitch because this one can be a little bit fiddly because they are so small. Because they're only nine stitches wide, so that's two. And we're just literally working one single crochet oh, evenly if we can. This is where the positioning becomes a bit fiddly. If you've got a big loop, it's gonna show in your leg. So just reposition. We're just working one single crochet into each stitch around. You can fold your project out of the way if those stitches are in the way. And we're doing that for a total of five rounds to give us a count of six rounds. And then I'm gonna meet you to fasten off and stuff that first leg. You should maintain your stitch count of nine all the time in each round. And we're just working one single crochet into each stitch around and the leg is gonna build out from the base of the body. So continue working those five rounds and I'll see you shortly. Once you have worked those five rounds in total, or six in total, we can lightly stuff this leg. We don't wanna stuff it too much because they actually look a bit cuter when they're flat. So I'm just gonna push that up the leg. into where that space is in the body. I obviously don't want to push out too much this side because we still have to work that other leg on. And we're still going to do one more row or one more round of decreasing in this leg as well. So we don't want anything too much in the way of these stitches either. So just going to tuck that back in. You are going to be able to push some stuffing down once you've closed the leg, but it's just a good idea to get some in there before we do this final round of the leg and fasten off. So once you've got some of your stuffing in there, make sure that your stitches are still free to work. We are going to begin, I've already taken my stitch marker out, for round seven, going to work an invisible decrease across each pair of stitches and then work one single crochet into the last stitch. I am doing invisible decreases, so that's the front loop only, front loop only, Yarn over and complete. So that's the first one. Find those next two stitches, front loop 
and the front loop of the next and complete oops that fell straight off my hook there we go just complete that one so that's two i'm gonna have to place my stitch marker in because i'm gonna lose count there we are just gotta do it for a third time so front loop of the next front loop of the next and decrease that was number three here's the fourth time so front loop front loop decrease it's really tiny now and we should have one stitch remaining and we're just working oh, if i can move that out of the way a single crochet into the last i hope everyone else finds this as fiddly as i do i'm so used to just working easier projects so i'm just going to snip off a nice long tail and bring my end through i can remove my stitch marker because this leg is actually finished and we're just going to use this tail and our darning needle to weave these ends i'm going to make sure that's a bit smaller and we're just going to weave through I always go through the front loops only in this project because I want this to be a neat close and this will help those stitches disappear. Gives us a nice close there. And then I'm gonna push this end through the middle and up out the body somewhere just to bury this end in here. Now be careful you don't pull too tightly because obviously we've still got to stuff this leg full. So before we start this next leg, I'm going to get that stuffing I put in there earlier and work it all the way up to the toe of this leg. There we go. It's not overly stuffed, but there's a bit of space in there. If you really are struggling to get the, um, get the stuffing down there, you can use your needle to help push it into where you want it to be and then it just ends up in that toe area. So the leg isn't overly stuffed, but we are just got one leg left to work. There we go. I don't want it to be showing stuffing too much. There we go. That's a bit better, isn't it? It's a nice seamless join from where we added that first leg. I'm gonna leave this tail. It's gonna be annoying for you, I'm sorry, but we're gonna add another one in a minute. This one can be fastened off because it's buried and it's gone. Let's work our next leg. I am going to turn and work it in this direction just because it makes it a bit easier and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to insert our hook back through that middle stitch all the way through. We can grab our tail and place it onto our hook bringing it back through that same space. We can do another chain one if you're finding it slipping around too much. And then we are ready to work into these nine stitches again. It's gonna be fiddly because the leg is in the way. So once you've got that first stitch in your sight, which for me is there, I'm gonna pull back so my loop is not too loose, bring my loop up, and this becomes stitch number one. Number two, and we just, just like before, we're going to work the same leg. It's just we've joined into a different position. Just popping my stitch marker back in for when I come back around to make sure I've got the right stitch count. So we've done two, three, four, five, oops, six. Seven, eight, and the final one for number nine. So then we have our nine stitches once again, and just like we did before for rounds two to six, I'm gonna make sure that tail stair is there. We are simply working one single crochet into each stitch around. So continue on and I'll meet you at the end of the second leg. Just before I work that final decrease, I am going to stuff this leg 
a little bit more and I am now cheating and using my blunt end scissors to push that stuffing in because it's going to be quite difficult to get any more stuffing in once we've worked those decreases that I have stuffed appropriately that the legs look the same thickness which they don't but that will squish out as it's finished and once again we're just going to work that final round that repeat of round seven on this second leg and we are working our invisible decrease four times that's one we work that final single crochet into goodness they just disappear at this point don't they i know where it is there we are that's the final stitch Whew. They are, I find those legs very fiddly. Once again, fastening off, weave those ends in. I need a little bit more in that toe. Let me just see if I can shove it in with my scissors. Make sure they're not terribly different in thickness here. No, they're pretty spot on. And then we can darn, blah. Then we can use our darning needle just to oops, close that opening just like we did before. Pushing it through the middle. Oops. And that'll be buried in the stuffing. You can read you can rebury it a number of times if you want to. So just kind of once you've come out one spot, go back in where you came out, go through the stuffing to another side. That end will never be seen again. And then we've just got these to deal with. I wouldn't recommend knotting them, whatever you think. Give them a tug. <laughs> we can just weave those ends in that are remaining here. Again, in the same format, we're just going to go through the stuffing. When a metal hook is a metal needle is much better. God, these things are useless when you've really stuffed. Oh my goodness, that's my dog snoring. It's getting late in the day. That's that one done. There we go. And then we can just snip those ends. And we just need to give Gary. If you have a little bit of a tail left, do you see that there? When you push it, it will just bury itself in. We just need to add some arms. Gary needs some arms, so we need to make two of these. We are going to start with a magic circle once again, or you can use a chain of four slip stitching to that first chain that you make to create a ring. We are going to work into the center of that ring, placing four single crochets only. So that's one, two, three, and four. It's not very many. We can then pull on our tail to close that magic circle. <laughs> we need to find that first stitch. I always find this a challenge, even after all these years. So one, two, three, four. We are working in a continuous spiral again. If you really are struggling to find the stitch, find the first loop, find that second loop and just use your needle to create some space to get your hook through. That was a mission. I hope you haven't had as much trouble as I have there, but we're just gonna bring that loop back through and I have caught something, there we go. And we're going straight into round two, we are working one, we are working two single crochets into each stitch around. So that's two. You can see where I've mussed up all my yarn here, trying to get my hook through. So that's three and four. We are just working two single crochets into each stitch around. Five and six. And then the last one. Once again, seven and eight. Now, because we're working in a continuous spiral, once again, we are not joining. We're just gonna work into that first stitch and we are doing rounds three to eight 
which is which is just six more rounds working one single crochet into each stitch around so that's number one and that's number two just like our legs it's going to get a little bit fiddly so i am going to use my stitch marker just in case i lose my place and to make sure that i maintain a stitch count of eight single crochets in each round We're just working one single crochet into each stitch and I'm going to push mine out so that my tail is on the inside pretty much straight away because it, it can get confusing otherwise, which is the right side and which is the wrong side. The first couple of rounds, well, the first few rounds of working eight single crochets is not too much of a challenge, but as the arm builds up, let me take, let's do again my tally over here, that's round three done. After round four, we just work the first couple, one and two. Place my stitch marker back in. And you'll see that I'm gonna keep my finger inside the arm so that I can reach my stitches a little bit easier. You may also find that folding your project down so that you keep the stitches low at the back can help keep everything out of the way as well. It's whatever works best for you. But when it's this teeny, it's a little bit more tricky, unfortunately. I do keep a tally of my rounds because it makes it a bit easier than trying to count them when they're this small. So continue on working a total of eight rounds. And then I'm going to meet you back because we're going to fasten off and sew our arms closed we're not going to stuff them and then we're going to um, position them on gary so go ahead and work your eight rounds don't worry i'm keeping count and i will see you in a moment to sew these arms closed so make two of them and meet me back once you've fastened off once you've worked those eight rounds we are ready to fasten off we do need a long tail because we will be sewing these arms onto Gary. I'm just going to bring my tail up and out of the way. If, like me, you've still got your end hanging around, you can just tuck that inside the arm and that acts as a little bit of stuffing. We don't stuff the arms because we want them to lay nice and flatly, nice and flatly, nice and flat against Gary's shoulders, I guess they would be. But we do need to sew these arms closed. It's gonna make our job of sewing them on an awful lot easier. So I'm just gonna fold it. So I've got that slip, that last stitch there, and I'm just gonna weave through, and I'm doing a whip stitch just to close them. And then once you've reached the end, you are ready to sew that arm on. Give that a nice pull. And then position it where you want to. If you have those fancy amigurumi pins, you can use them to position the arms in place. I just have my fingers, so that's what I'm going to use. And I'm going to be going down into Gary where I want that arm to sit. And I'm just gonna go into that first stitch. And make sure I position that arm well going to come back up and back to that next stitch or the next space into the stitch and secure that and then we're ready to go down and back through again just kind of going through the alternate places and get his head Fiona and positioning oh I don't want that push that back in there we go and just make sure you've gone through all the stitches securing those arms exactly where you want them i've just gone two rows down from his neck and then he has his cute little arms once you are happy with his positioning i would do one singular knot just by coming through Pulling that nice and tight, and then you can once again bury the end through Gary's body, coming in and out a few times. Oh, 
Don't do that though. And grab another needle. Probably a very good reason to only use big metal needles in your amigurumi, just in case this happens. Because you don't want to leave that in there, do you? Oh God, really have stuffed in well, haven't I? Go back through and try and find a nice easy exit. There we go. Once that's buried, there we go. Oops. We just need to put the next arm on. You really only need a small amount of this scrap red to pop his smile on. And this always feels a little bit strange if you're not used to adding on features because we're gonna come in from the back of his head. He says, but I've stuffed this really well, so we'll be lucky to come out. And we're looking to come out in a stitch underneath his eyes, probably a row or two rows below. I'm just gonna have to be brave and push through. Make sure that you've got an end to hold onto as you bring that colour through. And then we're going to go in, back in, near where his smile was. But we want to come back out in at the middle stitch down. This will help us to secure. Let me just find that again. Where did that go? That one. We're coming out here. This will allow us to secure his smile in place. Because right now it's just a bit nonplussed. It's not really bothered about being Christmassy at all. So if I just pull the smile down and we're going to go back in through that same spot that we came out. And then we can come back out of his head. Ideally not pushing all his stuffing out. There we go. Then as you pull that, you don't want that to be too tight. So I've just left both tails coming out the back of his head. And then we can loosen his smile up a bit and tighten up and tighten up where we need to as well. And there he has a little cheery face. And you can opt to just cut these ends off. It's not a hardship to replace his smile if we need to. As always, it looks really shocking when you see that at the back. But they soon disappear into that stuffing when you move about those stitches. So we have a shiny little happy face. So let's do his ribbon. You can simply tie a bow around his neck, and this is obviously completely optional, but it does look adorable when you do that. You're gonna need probably a good length. I'm not very good at doing bows. Let's see if I can do this. This isn't stretchy, this is just a ribbon like a cord. A bit too big. Yeah, I'm really not good at bows, am I? And then when you're happy with the size of that bow, you can just cut the ends off. There we go. And then he's got a nice little bow on. And all that's left to do is, of course, glue on his little gumdrops. I don't have my glue gun on, but we can imagine, if I don't move him too much, <laughs> that he does have his gum drops on. Thank you so much for joining me for this tutorial to create your very own Gary. I really hope that you've enjoyed making your very own and I will see you in the next video.